All right, so in this video, I wanted to go over the questions and problems that you worked on in class so that you could see the solutions and make sure that you understood how to answer them. So let's get started. Okay, the first question has to do with the relationship between um, period and the quantities dealing with the simple harmonic oscillator like the uh, spring constant and the mass. So just start off, omega is the square root of k over m. This is equal to 2 pi times the frequency, and frequency and period are inversely related. From that, I could find that period is equal to 2 pi, the square root of m over k. So that's okay if you didn't know that um, or work through that. You might just look at your equation, but I thought it was helpful to look at how we might get at it that way. So here we can see directly how period relates to mass and spring constant. So if we make the mass bigger, you can see that the period will also get bigger. And I'll just say it will get longer because it's amount of time. So as mass increases, period will increase. In the second question, if we are, keep the mass the same but um, make the spring constant get bigger, so if, if k gets bigger, what happens to the period? Well, because it's in the denominator, the period is just actually going to get shorter. So this is just understanding how these quantities la um, determine um, or play a factor into these values. Um, in this problem, this is just um, practicing identifying the different constants that we see in these equations of motion. We might want to compare this to the general expression that we saw in our book, a cosine omega t plus phi. And so we know that this number out front is our amplitude, so that is 35 centimeters. Um, we can actually, it's, it's kind of common not to be too worried about how we express the amplitude, whether it's in centimeters or meters, because we're not doing any more calculations with that. Um, other things I can get right away, omega is going to be 14, and that's per second, and the phase angle is pi over 4. Now to get some of the other values, we're going to have to do a little bit more work. Um, omega is equal to the square root of k over m. And so I already know what omega is, but I wanted to figure out what the spring constant is. So I can rearrange this expression. I'm going to square it first. And k is going to equal to m times omega squared. And we're told that the mass is 2 kilograms, and our omega was 14. So our spring constant turns out to be 392 newtons per meter. Um, from omega, again, I could get the frequency, the regular frequency. And so that's the number of oscillations per second. We usually express the frequency in hertz, which is just one over a second. And then the period is the inverse of this, which would be 0.45 seconds. And I think that's all that they asked for. We found the amplitude, the period, the angular frequency, the frequency, phi, and k. So we did it. Okay, this question is a little bit different. They don't give us the expression, but they're going to ask us to find it eventually. So here we know our mass is 2 kilograms. Um, the spring constant is 5 newtons per meter. It's pulled 15 centimeters from the equilibrium position and released. So 15 centimeters becomes our amplitude. So they gave us a lot of information. Because it was released, it didn't have any velocity at that point. Therefore, the mass was not going to move any further away from the equilibrium position, and that's why it becomes the amplitude. The angular frequency of this motion 
we can use our values we were given, the spring constant and the mass, and that ends up to be 1.58 per second. The amplitude I already found was 15 centimeters. The period which can be found by 2 pi over omega, is going to be 3.97 seconds. The maximum velocity, we didn't talk a lot about this, but in the video that I showed you, or I made for you over the weekend, the expression for velocity for our simple harmonic oscillator looks like this, because we take the derivative of the position this amplitude becomes the maximum value that the velocity can have. It goes between positive and negative values. So V max is omega times A. So it's 1.58 times 15 centimeters. If I do it this way, my velocity will be in centimeters per second. I get 23.7 centimeters per second. Um, and where will the maximum velocity come happen? That's going to happen when x is equal to 0, because at that point, all the motion is, um, in kinetic is kinetic energy. And finally, the equation describing the motion for, the, um, for, the, for this situation, if we look at the sort of general way that we write it, We actually realize that because x is equal to the amplitude at t equals 0, that's going to mean that our phi is equal to 0 because we don't need any phase angle. And so our expression is going to be x of t is 15 centimeters times a cosine of 1.58 t. And so that is how we could express the position of this object at any time. Okay, so here's a different question using your graph knowledge. This is a graph of position versus time. Again, it looks like a cosine function that describes our simple harmonic motion really well. Um, it's asking when we have the most negative velocity. So we should remember that the slope of this graph will give your velocity. And so we want to find the steepest slope. And we also want the slope to be negative. So it looks like the steepest slope occurs like right around here, these locations, because there it is negative and it's the steepest it gets. And so that, if this time is t over 2, because right here is t, and this is halfway in between, so that's going to be at, at t over 4, okay? All right, a mass on the end of a spring undergoes simple harmonic motion. When the mass is at its maximum displacement from equilibrium, what is its instantaneous velocity? We want to remember that this is a turnaround point. And so because of that, the velocity has to be equal to zero. If it was moving at the maximum displacement, it would be displaced more because it could keep moving. So we want to remember that the velocity is zero at that point. All right, here's another question. What happens if our amplitude is doubled how will that affect the period, and how will that affect the maximum velocity? So remembering from a couple slides ago, we said V max was equal to omega times A. So if A is doubled, V max will also double. But the period doesn't depend at all on the amplitude. So that does not change. 
So we want to so we want to choose the answers where t remains the same. And then we have to look um for the one where the Vmax doubles and that becomes b. It does not increase by a factor of the square root of 2. Um here we want to know when in this graph of um, x versus t, so position versus time, when does it have its most negative acceleration? Again, we kind of go back to the video from the other day, where I actually derived the expressions for velocity and acceleration. And since you're taking the derivatives of sines and cosines, when we get to acceleration, we actually realize that we can write the acceleration as minus omega squared x. So when a is the most negative, and that would be when it's equal to minus omega squared a, then x has to be equal to a because of that negative sign. And so that's going to occur here and here. t equals 0 was not a choice, but t equal to the period was a choice, and so that becomes my answer. Um, and finally, here is a graph of acceleration versus time. So that's a little bit different. Notice it's acceleration. And remember, I just found in the last slide I read that acceleration can also be found as minus omega squared times the position. And so when would the object have the most negative displacement? Okay, so that if x is negative, a will be positive, and the biggest that x can be would be x equal to minus a. Um, but in any case, we're looking for the biggest positive accelerations, which is going to be here and here. And so this is going to be 0.15 right here, and that is an answer. This one was 0.35, and so that's not one of the answers, so we eliminate this as a possibility. Okay, now we're going to get into the questions about energy and the pendulum. That was the second set of questions. All right, so what's going to be useful for these problems? The period is equal to 2 pi the square root of L over G. Okay, so it says we have a pendulum on Earth and it has a period of 2 seconds. If you take the pendulum to the moon, what will happen to the period of this pendulum? So we know that the acceleration of gravity on the moon is smaller than it is on Earth. So if we put in a smaller value here, the period that we get on the moon is going to be bigger than the period we had on Earth. So it's going to be some value Long, bigger than two seconds, so maybe three or four. Um, and then we go, well, can we change the pendulum to make its period two seconds? Well, because the period is equal to square root L over G, if G gets smaller, we could sort of compensate by making L smaller. And so then that could kind of offset the decrease in gravity. And so we can probably bring that pendulum back to a period of two seconds by decreasing the length of the pendulum. Um, here is a question about energy. If we double the spring constant, so if k goes to 2k, what will happen to the energy of the system? Remember that the total energy can be written in terms of the potential energy it has at the maximum displacement. So we can say that if k goes doubles, that energy is also going to double just because of its single dependence on k. And so that one wasn't too bad. 
Um, in this question, we're going to double the amplitude. So again, let's look at this. This one's a little bit more involved because we have to square when we double the amplitude to see how the energy changes, we square that. So the energy is going to increase by a factor of four because four is two squared. So doubling the amplitude is gonna have a much bigger effect than doubling the spring constant. Okay, in this problem, we have a mass on a spring. Mass is five kilograms. The K is 100 newtons per meter. And the amplitude is 0 0.5 meters. So first we wanna find the total energy. So that gives us 12.5 joules. Then it wants to find the speed of the mass when the spring is compressed 25 centimeters. This is a case where we're using conservation of energy. Basically, given a value of x, what is the value of velocity? So let's just simplify this a little bit. So K is 100, our mass is 5, we have 0.5 squared minus 0.25 squared. And this, gonna, all that's under the square root, we get a speed of 1.94 meters per second. Um, in order to figure out the maximum speed, let's see if I have, yeah, I did have another one. The maximum speed will occur when x is equal to zero because all the energy is kinetic. So we want to set k equal to e total. So 1 half mv squared is equal to 1 half ka squared. v is going to be the square root of k over m times a squared. And that turns out to be 2.236 meters per second. It makes it bigger than the speed I found in the last one, which makes me think that that's correct. Notice I could have also, also found V max as omega times A. That was from one of the previous expressions we used. Um, so either way, I can use energy or I can use this. I should get the same answer. Okay, this question is about the period of a pendulum. It asks what happens if I keep the length of the string the same but I double the mass and I look at my expression for the period and I notice it does not depend on mass, which means that the period won't change. And finally, no, oh, I guess actually this isn't the final question. It's the next to last question. If the two parakeets, parakeets sit on a swing with their combined center of mass 10 centimeters below the pivot, essentially we're sort of treating them, here's the parakeets, and here's 10 centimeters. So we're treating them like a simple pendulum where their mass is concentrated at the end and the length of the pendulum is 10 centimeters. So um, their omega is given by G over L. So we can find that as 9.8 over 0.1 and that's equal to 9.9 .9 per second, which is equal to 2 pi f, 
And so if I want to find f, I get omega over 2 pi. And that ends up to be 1.58 hertz. I probably could have just started off with an expression for frequency, but I didn't remember what it was, so that's okay. I was able to get there because I knew how to find omega. Okay, and finally, if you, what is the effect of the period on the pendulum if you double its length? Again, I'm going to look at my expression for period. And so if the L goes to 2L, then the period will go to increase by the square root of 2. Now it says, what if you decrease its length by 95, by 5%? So now my length goes to, well, it's 95% of its original length. And so the period here would be the square root of 0.95 times the original period, which ends up to be 0.97 times the original period. So if I decrease it by 5%, then it's 95% of its original value. That's how I got that. All right, hopefully this is helpful. Um, you can check your work if you've gone through and finished all these.